Welcome back to the Greenville Grapevine. We've got the weather and the birthdays, and then we've got a big topic today. So let's get going. Don't be disappointed with that long-term satellite contract. You need to switch up and to Sudlink and bundle and say they have so many great packages that you can get the SL200 SD HD TV and the 15 meg internet for only $59. Also, Sudlink home phone is available for only $10 a month with unlimited long distance plus the emergency 911 location capabilities. With Sunlink, 30-day money-back guarantee, and we promise guarantee, no contract required, the 12-month price guarantee. So lots of great packages that you need to find out about. And if you have the dish, well, if you switch, I bet they will give you a little uh, something, something there. So call Sunlink at 1-866-432-1184 or go to Sunlink. Dot com. Lots of great movies on videos on demand. Yeah, I've caught up with a lot of my movies. Good. Have you? Have y'all? I haven't. I need to. I know. I still need to see 12 Years a Slave, but I heard it's so depressing that I don't need to watch yeah. it. So I'm trying to pick happy, happy things to watch. All right. So who's got the weather pulled up? I've got it. That would be Pam. Yeah. And it looks like we've got a nice... Um, uh, evening, it's just going to be down to 46. Good. Tomorrow, um, a high of 74, a low of 52. Friday, a high of 78 with a low of 57. And listen to this, Saturday and Sunday, we're hitting 80. Beautiful, nice. beautiful weather. So it look, forecast looks good. Love it. Perfect weather for the Pirate Fest and Pigs can pig out. Absolutely. Everybody needs to yeah. make plans to go down. And either one of you in the, in the, in the Pirate costume contest anybody <laughs> come on now not at the moment <laughs> i know you're working on your costume. Working yeah, on okay. i'll get back, get back to, to you on that one yeah exactly it'll be fun all right winky wink give us the um okay, birthday shout out days for the week let's see monday nobody i can't I believe it okay t- tuesday was todd harris meredith joiner Teresa williams and laura lee potter today is andy rasco he's 50 so happy birthday and our own um Michelle Money's daughter Elizabeth mm-hmm. is eight today. Isn't that cute? I bet yes. she had a big party planned. Yep. Okay, and then tomorrow is Luann Warren, Les Robinson, Wendy Murphy, Beverly Walker, and my son Everett is going to oh. be sixteen. <gasps> so stop yes. it. That's so big. Look out on the roads. Yay. Then Friday is uh, Marissa Ihus. Yeah. Our, our own our used own, to be. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mark Gibson. And then Saturday is Celeste Stevens, Derek Perry, Henry Piner, and Ashley Rudolph. Very nice. Yeah, so happy you, birthday. Yeah, if you have a birthday shout-out, you need to send it in because we're drawing the name for the um, birthday bash winner on Friday, which will be at Winslow's. So we need to do that. But you will win a Krispy Kreme gift card for a whole year, a free dozen donuts every month for a whole year, and Ann's Dumplings products that are is oh so delicious. All righty. Um, we have a full studio here. We've got Winky and Pam, and now on the microphones, we've got Terry Williams. And we've got, I don't even know your last names, Katie? Katie Swanner. Swanner and Caitlin, right? Courtney Hartman. Courtney, I'm sorry, there was Caitlin that was going to come, and it's Courtney. I'm sorry, what was your last name? Hartman. Hartman. These two ladies um, that are ECU students are just, okay, so what are your officers on the SGA staff, I guess you'd call it? Um, I was just recently elected secretary. Okay. And I was just appointed chief of staff. Now, when will you guys, when will you ladies be? And uh, the new SGA president is uh, Michael King. That's right. Um, and you guys will be inducted when? Uh, we'll be inducted April 27th. Is that a big ceremony, by the way? I've never attended. Yeah. There's a banquet and everything, and your families come, and it's kind of a big deal. Okay, We're that's really, really excited. fun. Congratulations. That is a big deal. Um, I was actually reading an article that I think Michael had been involved with, and plus, and I'm going to have Terry speak to this because he was just on the Greenville Grit today, right, that's in right. y'all's show. Mm-hmm. But um, Michael, along with the rest of the SGA officers, have um, organized a student protest to be held at the Greenville City Council on April 10th, um, the which the reason for all of this, like we said earlier, if you really haven't heard about all of the controversy, I guess if we call it, I don't know, is the recent decision by the Greenville mm-hmm. Planning and Zoning Commission, which voted in March to return to the ordinance allowing only three unrelated students to live together in the area adjacent to ECU, which now is 
called the grid. It was never called that when I was in school here. I don't know who adopted. I like it actually, but I, it was never called the grid when we were there. And then there's the Truna organization, <clears throat> which is mostly an organization for the historic part of things in that area. It's like a homeowners and residents. Assa- and residents. Like, like homeowners. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, but tomorrow, the vote changed from three unrelated. Terry, keep me straight here, okay? Because you've been very involved with all this. You were on the planning and zoning board, no, right? No, no. I was okay. not on the planning and zoning, but that's basically what happened. The former council before this one um, did vote to change it to add three to four unrelated could live and they also added an overlay district and in that overlay they were going to attack problems like parking which they did and Mm -hmm. other issues that um, that came up then when this council was elected this past November they have chosen to um, have that reviewed and repealed right and that's how it got back in the hands of planning and zoning and that's where we are now Mm -hmm. that's right so tomorrow night the council will vote whether to repeal it or keep it the same. Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. So these ladies and the and the officers, the SJ president and the new officers and a lot of the students have taken interest in this and a position on this. So you're organizing a protest. What exactly what do you want the city council to hear from your perspective as students? Um, I think the city council kind of underestimates what the students do know and what we know that is going on in Greenville. Um, So I kind of just want them to understand that we do see what is going on and we want to be more involved in what's going like what is happening in our city Um, because a lot of us do kind of consider this our second home I'm we live here more than we do where we came from so it's good to know what's going on I mean even when we are older it's kind of practice for what we need to know is like I think it's just getting the city council to kind of hear our voice because we live here just as much as they do that's a very good point Courtney did you want to say something in addition to that yeah I just feel like it's like Katie said it's just as much as our home as it is theirs to me and we're here year-round some kids take summer school we have younger brothers and sisters that are coming we help stimulate the Greenville economy and well this repeal will keep us from giving landlords extra money and making rent cheaper for us students that pay for our own housing and pay for our own utilities and rent and things like that. What's the over, overall feel? And, and let me just say that I do have an opinion about this <laughs> in a big kind of way, but I'm trying to stay objective about this because I, I just, um, I do have a student that's at ECU, a, a child that is at ECU as a student. Uh, he's a freshman. And um, I am an advisor for one of the sororities that lives on Fifth Street. And these girls also are in sororities, different sororities. So their houses are on Fifth Street. And, um, but as a, as a member of this community and as a member of, an active member of the community, right. I, it does affect the overall property values in our community. Is that, isn't Absolutely. that true, it does. Terry? It does. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. And well, of course, most of you know I'm, I'm in real estate, mm-hmm. and um, so property values are very important. We want to keep the property value, values as high as possible. Naturally, the more income a property produces, the more value th- that it has, and we'd like to, to keep that there. Sure. Um, and so what these girls were referring to a little bit earlier, too, when we were speaking was when you have a landlord who has a house with four bedrooms and he's only allowed to rent to three, those three – Um, tenants are going to be paying more because he still has the same amount of debt whether it be a payment maybe he doesn't but he's got taxes he has insurance he has upkeep so his debt doesn't change um, because there's only three okay (laughs) all right let me uh, stop you right there and go back to the girls since you're students and you're going home to your parents and you're saying i want to live in x house whichever one it is but i can only live with two other girls instead of three or three other people, it doesn't matter to me, of unrelated. How has that affected the decisions you you have made as students? Are you still wanting to live in the grid area or, or is it just unaffordable for some of the, the, the students? Are you moving out elsewhere or going into the the student living places north of the river or where, where's everybody going? How are those decisions being made? Well, I think that the grid is such a great location. It's right across from campus. It's walking distance to a lot of the local restaurants that we all have kind of come accustomed to and started to love. And I think making this repeal, it will 
push a lot of students away because it's taking away housing for so many students and it will push them places to apartments outside of camp out, way off campus so that they will have to take buses and things like that and I just think that that's just it's not good that's yeah. right no mm -hmm. did you want to say something Katie um, I think when you look at it from a parent's point of view I think you would like your daughter or son to live with more people um, I know safety is kind of an issue around campus and especially even on campus so I think when there's more students in a building I don't think it's less likely to have a security issue and I think even if there's four families and four parents kind of working with the landlord to get even security placed in these houses I think it'll really like affect whether I live there or not mm -hmm. um, even on Fifth Street there's crime um, we get ECU alerts as students um, and my mom gets them and calls me it. I, I, or will text I, I'm me sure. It. I don't know where you're from originally, <laughs> but I can only imagine getting that text and thinking, oh, my goodness. You oh. know, I've sent my daughter down there, and it's not safe. Yeah. Living in the dorm last year, I would get them. And I'm like, yeah. I, um, Mom, I don't know. It's midnight. I'm kind of in my room. Yeah. Like, I'm safe. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. You're That's fine. Right. She's yeah. like, okay, good. I'll go back to sleep. Yeah. So um, my parents aren't aware of, or they are aware of the safety that is around and I mm -hmm. think they would be more likely to let me live on the grid close to campus if I was living with more girls okay well let's let's play devil's advocate against the students real quick okay because um, you are most most of the housing down there a lot of students I get it if you have more um, unrelated people living together you've got more cars more activity and that seems to be the biggest complaint with those that mm -hmm. those um, right. old the older people there or um, the professors or just anybody that wants to live there that may have a family that they're trying to raise there so do you see that as a big problem with the partying with more cars with more activity more noise is that what the major complaint is if there's the four unrelated remains I could kind of see how city council could look at it that way I mean more college students there are I guess the more nerves there noise there would be um, but I think that's more of like a maybe like patrolling and making us aware of like if there is a noise violation and what would that be or if maybe um, limiting I know they just did the parking passes this past year not mm -hmm. letting I think that was great not letting just students that don't even live there park there um, I think I mean, I can understand where they're coming from, but... Well, you live on... Both of you live on Fifth Street, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, do you... Are you often... Do you often notice a lot of parties in the grid area? Or is it a common occurrence? I mean, I, I mean, we're all... I was there. I, li I live there. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just, it is a college town. That's what, But don't most of the students go downtown was, and go yeah. to the bars and then they... And you sure the party may carry on a little bit after hours maybe I don't know I don't I don't know how loud it is down there at two o'clock in the morning I'm just asking um, I think I know with my friends it's more of the most noise I see is everyone getting out to get in the taxi to go okay away from mm -hmm. the city and a lot of times when people come home it's they're going right to bed I mean it's 2 30 they've been out they're tired I don't think there's a lot of house parties because these houses aren't on the grid aren't huge to have these right ginormous college parties right i'd like to address just a minute sure. about the rental and the number of students that are currently now living there 85 percent of the area that we're discussing is already rental property oh yeah so what they're looking to do is only add maybe 40 to 60 people it's not like all of a sudden it was a complete owner occupied neighborhood and now it's going to be rental for the last 30 years, it's been rental. It's been 85% rental. I lived on Eastern Street when I was a little girl. My parents rented that house. Right. Well, you know how old I am. I'm 57 years old. So yeah. it's been a, a long time. There's always been rentals. And I think that has been my question. I haven't been able to get an answer from any of the city council members that have objected to this as to what is the real reason why you want to change the four unrelated. What is the problem? 
because um, they're, it's not going to add that many more. And we haven't gotten an answer except it's not the four unrelated, it's the process. They didn't like the way it happened. Right. And so I'm still waiting for that answer as to what really is the problem with the four unrelated. As far as addressing the parking issues, I believe the overlay took care a lot of a lot of that problem. Mm -hmm. When they formed the overlay, they changed the parking ordinance to allow you to park uh, on a improved surface in the rear yards if you lived there when they installed the decal parking it did away with like you said students just being able to randomly park there if you weren't a resident mm -hmm. so I believe that that handled a lot of that issue because you had to be on an improved surface and you could have a fence or some sort of a barrier around each of the backyards and so you could have you know parking back there that relieved some of that if they vote to change that um, to repeal the overlay, then that will do away with that rear yard parking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to affect our code enforcement officers. Uh, I and I think the, yeah. one more thing, because I really want them to have plenty of time to talk, but I just think what these kids, to me they are, but they are young adults are trying to tell this community, they don't have to step up like they are doing right no, now. They, you're exactly right. They can right. just go on their mighty way, they can rent anywhere they want, they can party wherever they want, they can shop wherever they want, but they are trying to say we have value in your community and we want to have that value, we want you to recognize it, that we do, we are a part of this community and it means something to us. And what we also want is for these kids like this to stay here, raise their yes. families and and end up buying property and staying here and making it their home and I think that we're sending a, the wrong message. I, 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 I totally agree with that and I think that um, if anybody, it, I mean shame on anybody that devalues the, the economic impact that this college students have in this community, mm -hmm. period. Whether it's from a retail, that's right. whether it's rental, whether it, and some families buy homes here That's right. so their children can live in that house mm -hmm. and, and to be honest with you and I, I don't want to slam anybody here but some of this goes to me it goes back to th that this four un uh, three unrelated or four unrelated and the repeal and whatever happens here most of this goes back to home ownership whether you're a landlord or a homeowner right and do I think some of the houses have been neglected and they need to be fixed up? And they, whether these two young ladies live mm -hmm. there or somebody else, those landlords are not taking care of their property. Some are not. Some homeowners don't either. They don't yeah. either. That's my point. Yeah. And I, do, I think it gets worse mm -hmm. down there in that, yes, they're investment properties. I get that. And some people are only going to pour so much money into it if they mm -hmm. can get their money back out of it to pay the rent and the mortgage and everything right. else. I understand that. And, but my thing is, is why not? And those houses that are run down and need repair mm -hmm. and need upgrading can be identified pretty easily right you can ride down the road and see who's a good landlord homeowner right. and a bad one well, I think and all you have to would do be to not be able to do that we'd love to ride up and down those streets and not be able to tell the difference right but you can a landlord and a homeowner but it's not that way but i also something that no one really has brought out recently is what would have happened to the university area if these landlords had not stepped up and bought this property absolutely we would be looking at the same demolition problems that we've had in the West Greenville area unfortunately yep. because people didn't go over there and invest in that neighborhood they're doing it now some the city's having to step in some we do have grant money and that sort of thing but there's we don't know what would have happened because there are some restrictions through historic preservation about how some houses have to be redone and it's very expensive mm -hmm. and a lot of people cannot afford it all those houses are not historical homes no. mm -hmm. but um but then just just redoing the homes altogether it's very expensive and your normal first-time home buyer doesn't have that kind of money right to put in that kind of neighborhood yeah they just don't have it it's a, it's a big investment it is but but a, a, a nice fresh coat of paint and some nice <laughs> blinds. It does help. I mean, let's be honest about it. That is not an expensive uh, investment to fix it up and make it prettier. Well, I think, That's too, just one more comment is we need compromise. Yeah. And we don't seem to get that from um, from a few of our council members. Just it's They'll listen, to, but then there's no way. We're not even going to go there. We want it repealed, and we're not going to change it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not going to change our opinion. Right. So that's what we need. We need to work together, and let's find out how can we, you know, what can we do to fix it? What can we do to fix this program? Now that they have brought it back up, they need to, you know, compromise with us. And yeah. I hope that they will. And 
give us some real answers of why they really think the Fort Unrelated is so bad for this neighborhood. Yeah. Well, I'm impressed with the students and Absolutely. the officer, the SJ officers, in that you are stepping up. I have to admit, back in, when I was in school and if all this was probably talked about, I would have been clueless. I mean, I, honestly, I was just living my life, living there on Fifth Street, walked across campus, went to class, and then headed downtown on the weekends. <laughs> and, I, I mean, I am impressed. But, but the point being is this is a very important topic and issue that does affect everybody in this community one way or the other the students i know y'all probably feel like we don't notice you and that you aren't valued but you are you're seriously valued in this community um so do you have a lot of kids uh, or a lot of students i keep calling you kids or not kids but um <laughs> young adults um ready to go down and protest tomorrow how's that working out are y'all meeting somewhere and all going down together how's that working out um, we just kind of started getting in touch with a lot of the leaders of different organizations, spread the word. Um, we're hoping to have at least 100 to 200 people walking with us um, down from on just down Fifth Street to the city council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of all we've been doing, just meet together, get the word out. Good deal. So, Courtney, you want to say something? Oh, and I was just going to say, we have tons of flyers going around the grid to students, to homeowners, just getting the word out about what this will do for our community and how it will affect our future living-wise. And we're just really excited for the protest tomorrow. Good. Well, I, I think it's awesome that y'all are stepping up and taking a position on this and getting involved. And um, we'll see how it all comes out, won't we, Terry? Sure will. <laughs> <laughs> then they asked earlier if they would know, and the vote's going to happen tomorrow night. It's supposed to happen One, tomorrow night. Yeah. Unless something unusual takes place, that it will be voted on. Well, and, and many of the city council people have already made their statements about it, so we know that it, could it be a split vote or no? M the new member, Rick Crossgree, could Rick Crossgree be... Rick Crossgree is really the, the swing, swing vote. vote. We know that. And it, it will really depend on, uh, honestly, his decision. Mm -hmm. It's really in his hands right now. And that's why I think it's important that the people who have something to say come and say it tomorrow night. Say it or email mm -hmm. him, maybe, mm -hmm. or I'm sure you whatever somebody wants to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's probably getting bombarded right now. <laughs> that's all right. Bless his heart. <laughs> he ran, job. didn't he? <laughs> that's what you do when he you're in public it. office. That's right. So, any closing remarks? Either one of any of y'all. Um, I know y'all just want to encourage a lot of people to come out tomorrow from the student's perspective. Yeah, just if you're a student and if you care about living on the grid or housing for the future, I would really encourage you to come out tomorrow and help us protest and help us have a voice in city council tomorrow night well said she agrees with, katie agrees with that and terry any <laughs> you want to close remarks just uh, people we'd like out. to tell you a petition was filed um to stop this vote from taking place and uh, we'll see how that comes out too we don't know all the details about it but um a huge majority that's in favor of keeping the forum related have signed that petition and it was um, presented to the city so we'll see how that comes out too wow it's going to be interesting. It will be. It will be. Um, <laughs> and you can watch it. The the, show, um, the city council meetings are aired live. That's right. So if anybody's interested in watching it, um, I think it will be a big audience there mm -hmm. for that. And hey, go ahead. Sure, real go quick, ahead. Greenville Grit tonight, um, Michael King will be on the SGA. What time does that come on? 6.30. 6.30. If you want to hear what he has to say, he'll reiterate what they have talked about. Mm -hmm. And he's done He's got it together. Very good. <laughs> I think it's um, going to be interesting. Pam, why don't you step back up to the um, microphone here. Pam is the president of Academic Boosters at Rose High, and y'all have a big project going on. We do, and we are so excited. We really, um, <clears throat> as a booster organization, we're only allowed to have one fundraiser per year. And we were really looking for a fundraiser that would um, um, – not only generate a lot of money because the money that's generated goes back to the school and to the classrooms and um, we also wanted something that was um, sort of a lasting memory if you will and would also beautify the school so what we came up with is the leave your legacy at the jh rose brickyard and you can leave your legacy by buying a brick very cool and uh, we are so excited the bricks um, can honor a student they're engraved bricks and they can honor a student you can dedicate a brick to a special teacher administrator staff member you can remember an alum and we also um, would encourage um, business supporters uh, or business boosters of jh rose to buy a, an engraved brick 
Um, the the bricks are fifty five dollars, and they are a four by eight brick, and they will be placed at random in a uh, beautiful brickyard in front of the school. Mm-hmm. And um, the the fundraiser runs until the end of April. And um, sometime in the summer, the the installation will take place, and then there'll be a um, uh, ribbon cutting, if you will, at homecoming in the fall. Oh, very so, fun. Yeah. And if anyone is interested, you can go to the JH Rose website, um, and there is a um, a button to click, or you can uh, about the Brickyard Project, or you can go to www. Jhracademicboosters.weebly. That's w e e b l y dot com. That's um, www.jhracademicboosters.weebly.com. And it's going great. Yeah. Um, we just started it the first of April, and we're going by. It's going gangbusters, um, but we still have a long ways to go to meet our goal. And the process is so easy. You go online. You type in, um, there's just a maximum number of characters that you can put on each line of the brick, and it's spelled out in the instructions. Mm -hmm. You hit submit, you get a confirmation, and it's done. And then you separately mail your um, check in, and all that information is on the website either um, also. So it's just very easy. If you've got a graduating senior this year, great great grad gift. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Perfect. And we've got alumni yeah. like your husband would be a great father's and children, day gift yeah. <laughs> and your children yep. or a mother's day gift for alumni and we've had i think the um thus far we've got a brick to honor an alum from the early 60s oh, neat. so yeah we're hope you know we'll hope we'll have them all over the all yeah. over the the years. Yeah. So Terry, you're a Rose High grad, aren't you? No, I actually no? didn't graduate from Rose, no. but everybody else in my family did. I thought so. Okay, okay Terry, I hope you wrote down that yes. website. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. She's got a lot of family members that went yeah. to Rose. So uh, fun. I think it's a great um, project to do and it'll look great in the courtyard, right? Yeah, it'll be in the courtyard. In the court, yeah. Well, yeah. it's out in the front of the school. Not, okay. not in the courtyard, but okay. the front of the school. And it certainly needs a uh, sprucing up. And this is part of a larger plan to um, beautify and improve the um, overall curb appeal of the school. Good deal. Lots of history at Rose High Absolutely. right here in Greenville. So. All right, just to recap, if anybody wants to go to the city council meeting tomorrow night, it, uh, it starts at 6.30? 7. 7 o'clock mm-hmm. at City Hall. You will see these lovely young ladies and many other college students, I hope, um, there to um, make a statement to protest the... the um, the decision. So it should be interesting to see how that goes. If uh, I don't know if there's any other websites to go to about this or any other information, Terry. Just I'm not familiar with me, any, and just me just that the meeting is at the City of Greenville, yeah. unless you all have it somewhere on a website at ECU. Yeah, if, if the students, I don't know if y'all got anything. Just you're pretty much just sending out messages, tweeting, and um, we kind of have a Facebook page right now. Okay, it's kind Perfect. of the easiest way to get in touch with college students. <laughs> um, just giving them tips of what's going on and stuff like that okay perfect well i hope it goes well either way um it just needs to be resolved doesn't it so and we need to move on all right we do a thing around here called what's for dinner so everybody get ready for that be thinking what you're going to be having for dinner i'm having those quesadillas but um anyway it's brought to you by farmville furniture if you have not shopped for furniture lately and you need some fresh new ideas for your home then go over to farmville furniture in downtown farmville they have the new they have the Hinkle Harris line that is back, and it is just beautiful. I was there the other day, and they have so many beautiful pieces. That is one of those just very exquisitely finished and high-quality pieces of furniture. So if you want to go over to Farmville Furniture, it's only going to take you a few minutes, but the shopping is excellent at Farmville Furniture. They have beautiful gift shop, beautiful furniture, great things for the spring, and bright colors for your river house or for a beach house or for your own home just a beautiful fun place to shop with randy and hunter so make the short trip over to farmville furniture it is well worth the drive so miss winky well i'm going to the ecu baseball game Yay! Yay! you so know i will eat some popcorn and maybe a hot dog and who are you cheering for winky uh, you know may the best team win <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, from a true state fan married to a state Person. Well, Mary, yeah. yeah, clarify that. A yeah, bit. exactly. Yeah. By, right. by association. There you I go. See. 
And Pam, who is a wolf pack. I am. I'm not going to the game, but for dinner, I, I feel like a broken record. Asian chicken. Yum. My guys have to have it at least one time a week. Well, and perfect. so today's the day, Asian chicken. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Courtney, do you know what you're having for dinner? I think at the sorority house tonight we're having spaghetti and meatballs. See, another th another great thing about living on camp right there yeah, on yeah. Fifth Street. Did it? You can go home right to your sorority house and it's cooked for you. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> Katie, what are you having? Um, I think we're having sandwiches. I honestly don't know. <laughs> Terry? I'm going out somewhere, but I don't know where. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the baseball game, too, to cheer on the Pirates. We need a big win. They beat us by one run last time right. in Raleigh. An amazing catch by an NC State player in the outfield. It was a really great game. So, cheers for the Pirates tonight. We hope they win. And, um, again, remind everybody, tomorrow at the Her Magazine show uh, shopping spree is at the Convention Center starting at noon we will be there at five o'clock for the greenville grapevine and then winslow's on friday so come out and do a lot of shopping i think a lot of the retail stores are going to be there a lot of things for you to purchase tomorrow at the convention center thank you ladies everybody have a good night thanks for grabbing onto the grapevine every night this time five o'clock on star 94 3